it gives me a countdown. I haven't done this. We're live. Hello. Welcome to With the Contest Queen. I am so excited tonight because I have not done one of these in a while and I have the most amazing guest. I'm going to just read you his bio because this says it all. Michael Lozier, known as the how-to guy for teaching the law of attraction, is the best-selling author of three books, The Law of Attraction, The Law of Connection, and Your Life's Purpose. The Law of Attraction has 3.5 million copies in 37 languages. There is no excuse as to why you haven't read his book. Michael's caught the attention of Oprah Winfrey, who's interviewed him four times on her Soul Series radio show and Sirius XM. Oprah invited him to have his own show on his Oprah and Friends Network radio. Oh, my gosh. I remember listening to that. His certified... Oh, he has certified... 550 law of attraction facilitators in 17 countries teaching them how to use accelerated learning techniques when teaching the law of attraction. He lives, and I'm so jealous, in the beautiful Victoria, BC on Canada's West Coast. And of course, it wouldn't be with the contest queen if we didn't have a prize tonight. Oh my God, I have five copies to give away of Michael's book. I am so excited. This was the first law of attraction book that I read and I loved it because when it says he's the how-to guy, we're not kidding. This, his book talks about, we're going to get into it. His book gives you the one step that most law of attraction books miss. And that is how do you, because that's what everyone's doing. How do I do it? This is great info, but how? And that's what Michael answers. Welcome, Michael. Hello, Carolyn, and all your contest queen followers. Today is going to be your lucky day. It is. Do you know also that we've known each other 18 years? Yeah. I met you in 2003. Yeah. Well, that's when my book came out, it was 2003. Uh, and so it's pretty old. I'm actually working on an anniversary issue for next year with my publisher. <gasps> Yes, oh, and, they, and they wanted to modernize it. And I thought, well, you know, there's no reference to the secret or anything in my book because my book was before that. So I didn't want to do that. And they said, can you do something about social media? And I thought, I don't know. And then I got it. So the new book is going to have a whole section. You know what it's called? Have a, How to have a five-week law of attraction book club and workshop on Zoom. And I'm going to supply because, and I'm doing that live right now. I've been, I'm on my fourth one. They go for five weeks. Why am I doing it over and over? So I can teach it to the reader how to host them, how to market them, what to do in class one, class two, class three. And that is the new way to read a book like mine, get friends. Because my hunch is you've taught it to somebody already, right? You've explained something in it. So the whole notion of doing book clubs, that's going to be the main section in the new version. That's so fun. I'll have to do that for my next book. And you're the first person I told, so there you go. Well, and all my followers. Yes. <laughs> Oops. Now, I just, and I did something, I discovered something on uh, on social media, and I put something, and I didn't know you could do this. How did I not know this until now? Because I've had a YouTube channel for years. But I actually made a playlist on my YouTube channel. Yes. Of all my favorite Michael Loger videos. Oh, no. There's okay. seven of them. They're wow. my my top favorites of the Law of Attraction videos. He has done, you're up to what, like three, I don't even know how many hundred you've done. Well, I did about 350 uh, live Google Hangouts. That was before we went live on Facebook. So I did about 350 of those. And I did those every Friday for four years. What I loved it. I, I couldn't wait for Fridays. I would get excited on Wednesdays, knowing about Thursdays, the day before Friday. And then... <laughs> One more sleep. <laughs> yeah, 300, 350. I was running out of topics. And then I started to... I got introduced to the Emotion Code. And now for three years, I'm doing a live Facebook and YouTube show. So it's, you know, it's my format. I love doing that. But I've got a lot of playlists. I've got a lot of videos. I've got... Um, yeah, if you so, can't yeah, find my so that's what I've done. So if you, if you want to see what I think is awesome, just go into my YouTube channel and then it'll take you to Michael's. And I put seven in there. They're my favorites. Thank you. 
And is episode number 13 one of the favorites, the one with the Kerplunk game? I think so. I know that the the two that I know right off the top of my head, one is the pizza one, how to order a pizza. <laughs> well, because it makes so much sense. It's so logical. I'm putting it in I the book because very... when I wrote the book, I didn't have that example. I developed it over the last 15 years. So I'm putting a little story uh, in the book to kind of summarize the whole, because it does a summer. You know what? I might share it today too. We'll see. They, I love that example. See, I'm very logical. And I like that example because it just, it made so much sense to me. I, I have a daughter who's artsy, so he, she's very left brain and I'm so right brain. Yeah, yeah. And so I just, I, that's why I love that example. The other one I like is, what does everybody ask me? Have you won the lottery? And you yeah. had a whole video on winning the lottery and, and why, it's made so people, much sense yeah, too. Why people, most, why people, most people don't win the lottery. Everybody wants to come to me, how do you win the lottery? And I said, well, I, I can tell you why you're not winning it. You'll have to figure out why, what you need to do. But uh, yeah, we can touch on that tonight too. Yeah. And the other, yeah. So we, we can go watch those, but first, the first question is, and this makes so much sense. What do people know need to know about their vibes or their vibration is another way to say vibes. Yeah. And it's well, relationship to what they are attracting. Okay. Thank you. Because that's really important to know. That's right. Well, first, you know, the word vibration, I want to demystify that for people because it's like, what does that mean? Imagine me teaching that 20 years ago and using the word vibration and everyone's giggling. Not so much anymore, right? We've kind of advanced from the last 20 years. But let, so let's take the word vibration. There's a cute little four letter word that's buried within that word. And that is what? Vibe. So we're going to use the word vibe instead of the word vibration. That's all it is. A vibe is a vibration. Now we use the word vibe to describe a mood or a feeling. We might say, oh, wow, Karen's sending off a really positive vibe. Or, you know what? I don't like the vibe in this building. Whenever we use the word vibe, we're describing a mood or a feeling. So what is a vibe? It's really a vibration. And what is a vibration? It's a mood or a feeling. That's all. And in the vibe world or the feeling world, there's only two kinds, positive ones and negative ones. And here is something everybody needs to understand. Right now and right now, you're not even trying to do it on purpose. Right now, you have a mood or a feeling. There's not one in the middle. Now, let's say on the positive side, you could just be content or like totally elated. They're still on the positive side. And then there's some on the negative side. You could be a little irritated or really ticked off. I'm gonna repeat myself. Somewhere on this dial is your vibration. Almost like a dial like this. Everything from here to here is negative dial. Everything here to here is positive dial. No, there's not one in the middle. So that means right now, without doing it on purpose, without being deliberate, even without even knowing it, everyone is putting off or sending or emitting a feeling or a vibe. So if I'm ticked off and angry and disappointed, I'm not even doing it on purpose, but I'm emitting and I'm putting off a negative vibe. And then when I'm feeling lucky and abundant and blissful and woohoo, I won this, when I'm having those experiences, I'm putting off a positive vibe. You know, you're thinking, okay, Michael Ogier, what's the big deal? We get it. Well, here's the part you didn't get. At every moment, you're putting off this vibe. And this is a picture of you, everyone, and a, a little cartoon bubble around you. Imagine that's you. And this is your vibrational bubble. In other words, there's a bubble around you that's containing and including the vibration that you're sending. Carolyn, remind me, when, it, when do we have a mood or a feeling, right? All the time. That's it. So right now and right now, right. everybody has a mood or a feeling. And this mood or feeling is causing you to send a positive or negative vibration. In comes law of attraction. It's energy. It's in your room. It's in your car. It's in your office. It's at your workplace. It is everywhere. And I can't prove it to anybody. I'd love to put it in a little test tube and pass it around the room and say, hey, this is law of attraction. Do you believe me now? But I'm not here to prove it to anybody. <laughs> I could care less, but I am here to teach you what you can do to today so you can stop attracting what you don't want, start attracting what you do want. And then over the next couple of year days, you'll say, wow, is this ever a coincidence? Listen, 
I know you and your viewers have said this before. Hey, this is such a coincidence. This is so synchronistic. This is so serendipitous. Everything fell into place. I just asked for it. My friend gave it to me. This is good luck. You know, every time you use those words, you're describing evidence of law of attraction. So when I say, hey, this is such a coincidence. I was just thinking about you. What you could say is, hey, this is, low, so, this is such law of attraction. You know, I've been giving you attention, energy, and focus, which is causing me to include you in my vibration. And the law of attraction is deliberately matching everything I give my attention to. That's a long hello. Or you could say, this is such a coincidence. Well, this is so synchronistic. I was just talking to you about it yesterday. And now there's a whole document. This is so synchronistic. You know what it is? It's evidence of law of attraction. So you're already experiencing it. If you've ever used the word coincidence and serendipity and synchronicity and fate and karma and meant to be, you are already experiencing it. And here's why I'm telling you that. You're already experiencing it. And you don't have to turn it on. It's already on. It's not like a light switch. So, you know what? I'm going to tap into law of attraction. It's on right now. It's a switch that stays on. And here is the on switch. Law of attraction, which is this energy around you, is eavesdropping on your vibration. And you always have one, negative or positive. And it responds to the vibration that you're sending by giving you more of the same. That's not very smart. Law of attraction isn't smart. It's obedient. Law of attraction doesn't have a brain. It's not a person. It's not a thing. It's a two-word job description. The two-word job description for law of attraction is match vibrations. There's no brain required. It's like a robot. Here's a vibration. What do I do with that match? It? Here's a vibration. And then when it comes time to say, oh, here's a negative vibration. What do I do with that? I don't know. Look at the job manual. You know what it says? Match vibrations. I want you to get it. I want to brainwash. You know, part of my success in being a trainer in my book style is that I'm using accelerated learning techniques. And I'm using techniques that satisfy all the learning styles. Whether you like to see it or hear it or think about it or do it, you cannot not engage yourself in my book just like people are doing right now. So I'm going to show you an image of something. And this is the main characteristic of what law of attraction does. Carolyn, say it when you see it. Match vibration. That's it. Matches. <laughs> It's like at one time, there was the universe, you know, the Big Bang, the universe got formed. And then we, and then a sign came up, and here's what it said. The help wanted sign for the new universe, that's all it is. It's all oh my new. gosh, I haven't seen that before, that's hilarious. Oh no, it's new, it's new. I love it. Well, what's the job of the universe? Match vibrations. What if they're negative? Match vibrations. You see, law of attraction doesn't know if it's good or bad for you or whether it's positive or negative or whether you want it or don't want it. Or what. It's not a decider. It's a what? It's a match. It's a matcher. So, you know, I've got a series on law of attraction myths, and I'm going to dispel one right now. And these are all my opinion, and I'm a comic as well. So I want you to hear the message in the teaching. And here's the myth. Hey, Michael, I just saw 1111. It's a sign from the universe. That's the myth. You know what the reality is? The reason why you keep seeing 11 and 11 over again, because every time you see it, you tell 10 friends and you post it on Instagram and you give it attention, energy and focus. And as you're giving attention, energy and focus to attracting that 1111 for no other reason than it was matched. So law of attraction isn't delivering you signals or messages. It's matching vibrations. Law of attraction isn't trying to teach you a lesson. It's matching vibrations. Law of attraction isn't doing it for you or to you. It's matching vibrations. Is yeah, that but, what I yeah. keep finding dimes? What's that? When I go pin code hunting, I keep finding dimes. Well, that's the reason you keep finding dimes. It's not a signal. Well, you, you know what the signal is? You're a good matcher. That's the signal. There's no message there. <laughs> I always thought it meant my life could change on a dime. 
you know what? Well, you know what? This is the beauty of all of this. I'm going to say, I want everyone to hear this because you might, you might be an 11 say, no, you know what? 11, 11 reminds me to send love to my kids. I'm not, I don't want to take you away from that. But in addition to understanding rule number one, everything's being matched. But here's the other rule is, oh, I lost it. Uh, it was just at the tip of my tongue. Law of attraction doesn't care what you're calling it. It's responding to how you feel about it. So if you can say, ooh, 11, 11 means luck's coming my way, and now you're vibrating, so it's okay. But I want you to get it. It's not a signal or a sign. It's like an affirmation. What if the affirmation were to say, I win lotteries every day? That's a nice affirmation, right? But it won't stay that way very long. Listen, most affirmations send negative vibrations. Somebody write that down somewhere. I don't know who's writing. Write it down. Most positive affirmations send a negative vibration. Listen to this. Now, Carolyn, you might be talking to somebody that wants to know more about winning strategies and so on. And they haven't won anything like in two years, like not even a cup of coffee. And they're on their bathroom mirror, it says this. I'm lucky and I win prizes every day. You know what? That's a positive affirmation. You know what? Law of attraction isn't responding to the words. It's responding to how you feel about when you say, I'm winning the lottery every day. And you know what your voice says inside your head? No, you're not. You haven't won in two years. You'll never win. Nobody in this city. Are you understanding my point? Law of attraction doesn't know that you're reading an affirmation. It's responding to how you feel about it. Good. So that's what law of attraction is always matching. And, you know, the opening question, which this was a long answer, but I'm a trainer too. You know, I'm not a motivational speaker, but I'm a motivated trainer. And I want people to leave here today understanding what's law of attraction, how does it work. Most important, why am I attracting crappy things? Because I know that you know that you are not you, but people watching. Why do people, why did Oprah attract negative things? Why do positive people attract negative things? Coming up here on the Contrast Queen show with Michael O'Shea. Why do positive people attract negative things? Now remember, law of attraction doesn't know who I am. Oh, oh don't, don't, don't bring anything negative, Michael O'Shea. He said, it doesn't know who I am. Doesn't know who Oprah is, doesn't know anything. It's an eavesdropper and a matcher. So I'm gonna give everybody some homework. And everyone is using three words. And these three words are causing you, it's very subtle, these three words are causing you to include the vibration of what you don't want. So what if I was giving attention, and, and what do I mean by giving a vibration? If I'm giving something my attention, if I'm talking about it, thinking about it, you know, observing it, if I'm giving it my attention, I'm not even on purpose, I'm sending the vibration about it. That's the match, I'm just sending it. So when I'm complaining about something, does that get inside my vibration bubble? If I'm just complaining, oh, I don't like that. I always get clients that cancel. That's right. When I'm complaining, I'm including it in my vibration. And when it gets included, it gets, say it when you say it. Matched. That's right. When you complain about something that you don't like, law of attraction doesn't know. It's not smart. It's obedient. What about if you're worrying? Oh, you know what? I'm worrying I'm not going to get that job interview. I'm worrying. When I'm worrying about something, am I giving it attention, energy, and focus? Yes. Mm. Law of attraction doesn't know that I'm worrying. It's matching. Okay, I have a question for you there that we didn't talk about, but you've brought up a good point. So we've had times in our lives where things happen and you're just sad because... You need to go, you need, we're humans. We have a whole range of emotions, right? Otherwise your, your scale would only be from, from zero to a hundred or 50 to a hundred, not zero to 50, right? We have the okay. whole range. So some days we have, you know, we have a bad day. We sit and cry and we go through that emotion. And I always thought it was good to allow that emotion to get it out of my system. So then I could be positive again. Oh, kind yeah. Of like, I, have a, I have a terrible analogy, but it's the only one I could ever think of. It's kind of like pus coming out of a wound. You want that pus to come out so it could heal and be better. And then you're back into the good 
vibe. This, so, is real, this is such a good point. It's okay to get ticked off and angry and break dishes and swear and curse and stomp around the house. And then what? Briefly. Okay, that I I always wondered that. Briefly. You bet. And also, if you get ticked off and say, you know what? I hate when this happens. That, oh, it just drives me crazy. Why do people do that? Briefly. And then you know what you're going to do? You're going to reset your vibe. And I'm going to tell you how to do that right now. I was just going to say, how you would do that. <laughs> That's it. It's okay to get ticked off and angry, but do it briefly. Now, how long is briefly? I don't know. Maybe a year ago, you'd have spent two days getting ticked off over something. And now you're down to an hour. That's briefer. And ideally, yeah. you could get it down to two or three minutes. There's no judgment about how long it is, as long as it's briefer than you would have done before. Just briefly. But you can birth clarity from that contrast or that thing you don't like. It's a, oh, I hate when clients don't pay on time. It drives me crazy. And, rah, rah, rah. and every time you complain about clients not paying on time or whatever, that's what you're including. And then you reset it. Oh, because then you notice it. You go, oh, I'm ticked off again. Okay, I'm going to sit and be ticked off for 10 minutes. I'll have a cup of tea and then we're okay. That's right. And here is, here's the three words that are causing that negative attraction in the first place. I want everyone to, you know, well, I don't know who I'm looking like I'm whispering. I'm here to, brain, I'm here to brainwash people today. And I'm going to wash their brain like I'm like there's someone listening. I'm going to wash their brain of the three words that are causing them to attract negative things. I want everyone to draw a circle the size of a golf ball. I want you to read it when you see it, write it when you see it, and listen to Carolyn's voice when she says it. These are the three words to eliminate from your vocabulary. What are they? Don't not know. Don't not know. So we're going to explain that to our friends, right? So I'm going to say this. I don't, I don't want to be rejected at the interview. So what did I just include in my vibe? Getting, getting rejected at the interview. Oh, I don't want this to be difficult. What did I include in my vibration? Difficult. Don't forget. What did I include? Forgetting. Don't drink and drive. Don't have sex. Don't do drugs. I don't want my clients to cancel. I don't want to have anybody that fires me. I don't want people to do this. Every time you use the word don't, not, and no, you just include it what you didn't want to include. And if you're not sure, go to Google and type in no football and see what shows up. Go type no football, and I can bet you you'll get millions of hits on football. You see, when you say no football, you gave attention to football. And Google strips away the words don't, not, and no and brings you what you said you didn't want. And if you're really not sure, go type in no sex and see what shows up. Every time you use the word don't, not, and no, you gave attention to what you didn't want to give attention to. And law of attraction doesn't know whether you want it or don't want it. It's busy unfolding and orchestrating to bring you more of what you said you didn't want. And then when that thing shows up that you didn't want, you point at it and say, that's exactly what I said I didn't want. I've been saying all week I didn't want that to happen. The law of attraction says, I didn't know that. I was just matching. By the way, that's not his voice. That's me. <laughs> I remember you saying this this tip a long time ago, and I would catch myself saying to my daughter when she went out to school, right, don't forget your lunch. So I would switch it because I could hear your voice in my head, well, no, not well. love direction, your voice. <laughs> and uh, okay. I would say to her, remember your lunch well, remember you your extra it. shoes that's right because i'm gonna then teach that's the positive that's right but how do you get to the positive so first thing i'm here to brainwash people make sure you wrote down the words don't not and know that international do not use symbol you'll remember forever burn burn burning done now how do you stop using it well guess what you won't most of you are going to hear yourself use it tonight before you go to bed and you'll say, oh my God, I just said don't, not, and no. Here's the sentence that you really need to know. I want everyone to write it down. Carolyn, see it, say it when you say it. Oh, so what do I want? So let's practice. Don't forget. What, so what do I want? Remember, don't spill your milk. So what do I want? 
Take your milk carefully. Don't beat up your brother. <laughs> so what do I want? I don't want my clients to cancel. I don't want this to be difficult. And don't you love it when your doctor says this will not hurt? It's like, oh, I didn't think it was until you brought it up. You see, whenever you use the word don't, not, and no, you just gave attention to what you didn't give attention to. How about if I said this is not a scam? <laughs> I didn't think it was, but now that you brought it up, how about don't hesitate to contact me? You won't be disappointed. Anybody type that today? Listen, wow. tomorrow when you go to type in, you will not be disappointed. Your baby finger is going to go backspace, backspace, and you've got to read it. If you won't be disappointed, so what will they be? Oh. You'll be yeah. excited working with me, or you'll get some good results working with me. Yeah, it's I okay. always type at the end of the customer service emails I do. Let me know if I can be of further assistance. I never say don't hesitate to reach back out. Yeah. So I guess you, you burned into my brain and I didn't yeah. even know it. Oh, yeah. Well, you were probably conscious. You know, when people first learn this, right, they're super conscious. Talking to the reading signage, talking to everything's don't do this and don't do that. And uh, so this is the homework. I promise people this will be enough to reduce your overall negative vibe. You know, People always say that I'm in the business to help people be more positive. That's not really true. You know, the best way to become more positive is to become less negative. You see, our natural state wow. is pure positive vibration. And like a flower or a lotus leaf, there's this negative crap going on in my life, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. What if I reduced and eliminated this piece of negativity in my life, and then this one, and then this one? And it's like, ah, it surfaces. So you don't have to become more positive. You just have to become less negative. And the best way to become less negative is stop attracting negative things. And the best way to stop attracting negative things is stop giving attention by using the words don't, not, and no. And when you do, you cannot not hear my voice say, so what do I want? You see, when you go from what you don't want to what you do want, the words change. And when the words change, the vibration changes. And when the vibration changes, the results change. And the best news of all, you can only have one vibration at a time. And law of attraction doesn't have a memory of what your vibration used to be when you were a complainer, not you, but people listening. And now it caught you celebrating what you like. It caught you talking about this great client that you got great results from and why you like that job interview and why you like that guy and why you like that woman. That's how you play the game of law of attraction. Yeah, I like that. It reminded me of, um, oh, it just popped out of my head. <laughs> oh, the dot, I, I heard a dietitian once, a nutritional expert, saying people have a hard time eliminating the foods that they love, you know, like the chips and the cookies and the muffins and the pies out of their diet. And he said, don't focus on removing those. Focus on just eating more good food and eventually you won't have room for the bowl of chips because you're going to be full of an apple instead and you just Probably won't right. eat the chip. So you just put in more positive stuff and the negative stuff just kind of falls away. It's the same idea. Yeah. You're removing the elim you're eliminating the negative by putting more positive in there. That's right. And the negative will get reduced because today, like I said, you're going to hear you not know, you and our friends are going to hear themselves use don't and they're going to catch them and say, oh, my God, this is a lot of work. And you know what? In two, like in two, three days, they're about to say something they don't want and they'll convert it before they'll say, you know, uh, remember, and they'll say, I caught that one. So that's right. And that, that gives oh. you a good vibe right there. Because Watch the right. minute you say, oh, I caught myself, you feel happy because you're like, oh, I got it. Yeah. And then in that moment said, wow, I just avoided giving attention. You know, it's like you can acknowledge yourself for doing that. And then after a while, you will hear yourself even think about the word no and just automatic convert it. Now, I've been using it in this conversation to teach points, but even when I'm using the word no right now, my little bell's going off. What do you want? What do you want? Because it doesn't know I'm using it in explanation. I've really trained my brain. And sometimes, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd get an email and I'd say, how am I going to answer that? The answer is no. How am I going to answer that? 
So I would get invited to do some, you know, seminar, um, you know, um, summits and stuff like that. And I've had experiences with them and they're not worth the effort. And um, so I don't want to say no. So here's my official answer. I'm going to pass. Thanks. That's yeah, that's a, that's a neutral answer. I don't explain and I don't complain. And you know how many people wrote me back and asked me more questions? Zero. Yeah, it's you know a neutral many... answer. It's, yep. It I'm doesn't have any emotion attached to it. It it doesn't, yeah, it's just, it's pass. It literally, the word explains the emotion. I'll just pass. Yeah. I know when I was traveling around the world, you know, I would have people sponsoring my trip and stuff. And, you know, everyone wanted me to stay at their home. And, you know, I didn't want to say no. So here was my official answer. Oh, I prefer staying in a hotel. That's it. <laughs> so it, it takes a trained behavior, particularly if you have kids and you're used to saying, don't touch that and don't spill your milk and don't touch the stove. Well, our mom or dad, are, they're going to find their common new words to be able to explain that. Just like you and I will do when we're writing business correspondence. You know, it's like, you know, it's just whatever it's, it's whatever is in our language that we're going to be more aware of when we're using don't, not, and no. But uh, you I still sell to... those buttons? No, I bought 10,000 of them and I, I gave probably 8,000 of them away. But I do want to do a quick shout out to the book. Listen, my book's 144 pages long. Everything that you heard me do today is the first part of the book. It's broken into four sections. And the first part of the book is how do I stop tracking negative things? And I can almost guarantee you won't find another trainer or teacher or book that teaches you this part. It's almost way impossible or difficult to attract things that you want when you got a negative vibe going on. So the first part is, let me clean up my vibe and then we're open for business. Then you can use law of attraction deliberately. And the other three quarters of my book is, now that you got your vibe all cleaned up, how do you place the order? How do you deliberately tap into law of attraction so you can attract more uh, you know, things for your personal business life? There you go. And it's 144 pages long. Do you want to know why, Carolyn? Why? You know, when I wrote my book 20 years ago, the thought of writing a book was like, you know, that I never, you know, I'm from, I'm from New Brunswick and never thought a Canadian was going to write a book and, you know, so on. So it was out of my sphere. So uh, I decided I was going to write a book because I had, I was doing a seminar in my house on Sundays for a year. I was having 44 people come up with the lawn chair. And you know what? When you have 44 people coming to your house, you got to take charge, right? You got to welcome people. You got to have an agenda. You can't chit chat with 44 people. It, we could when there was four of us. And then it's like, okay, there's 44 people. We can't hear from everybody. So I started developing processes and the clarity, through, the worksheets and the process, the clarity through contrast and so on. So I thought, I'm going to write a book, self publish. And I said, I'm just going to write it because I want it to be a speaker. And I said, even if I don't have sell them, I'll have a book so I can say hey, I'm an author. Can I come do a talk? So I went to the post office and I asked them, how thick can a book be before it doesn't fit in the slot of an envelope of a door? And you know what they told me? Yeah. This thick. Well, this they thick. lie. So they I went. They changed their stuff because mine. These are thicker and they still go through. So they've changed it. Oh, yes. Yeah. More books through the mail now. So um, and then I went to chapters, you know, our big bookstore and I measured it and it was 144 pages. Oh, I'm sorry. How thick are the other two books? 144 pages. And the other secret about my books, they were all seminars first. So when you go through the book, this isn't a love story about law of attraction. You said it earlier, it is the how-to. It's the processes, the worksheets, examples about the worksheets, examples Excuse about somebody them. wanting to track money. Yeah. Worksheets. The worksheets are downloadable. And you know, you can copy them. If you get the book and you don't want to write in your own, like your yeah. copy, you can just scan these. Oh, scan nothing. I've got beautiful copies on my website. All my worksheets are on my website at Michael. Well, that's right. Yeah. And examples on how to fill them out and Michael, well, we'll just we'll take a segue there. Michael has a very robust website. Like his menu, most most websites have like a one line, like mine, and it has like six things on it. 
Michael's is three lines high. Well, I've got these three. These are these are all businesses. That's a business. So I don't just have three books. For each one of these books, I've got hundreds of videos. I've got worksheets. I've got uh, programs, free videos, free courses. I've got nine thousand students in my online school taking free stuff with all this stuff. Yeah, That's actually what he's doing this summer. I put a link yesterday. There's a free thirty minute introduction uh, course on the website, which will be linked in the uh, description after this is over. And then he's doing this summer. This is exciting. Yeah. Lawofattractionbook.com slash reset, because that's what you said, right? Reset your vibes. That's so, right. oh, yeah. I'll, someone yeah. asked what's well, the That your one website. there, the uh, lawofattractionbook.com forward slash reset. There is what I just described to you today. I also have on a video course with the worksheet. So if you're the, if you're the student that likes to take notes, you might want to watch that course. The other course, which is michaelloche.com forward slash book club, that starts next week. You can join even after next week. We're meeting on a private Zoom call. Uh, it's not going live on Facebook. It comes with a 20-page workbook, and I am developing the chapter for my new book. So I'm, I'm, over, I'm over delivering everything, and then when I go to put it in the book, I'll take stuff up. But right now, it's five weeks long. You will learn the to master the other three steps that I talked about. Like, how do, how do I ask something? What do I need to say? What do I need to do? So thanks for letting people know about that. So there's, I'll just show, I just put a comment in there so everyone can see. That is Michael's main, like one website. He has others. We're I'll put all the links in the uh, description after the show's over, because I can't edit the descriptions before, unfortunately. Yeah. And in most okay, cases, you just go to Crazy history. Com, it's all there. How did you get on Oprah? Like that is the piece de resistance. Uh, you know what? I wish I could duplicate all of that, but it's all a cross between law of attraction, subject matter, and my desire. You know, I've been doing law of attraction seminars in Victoria, even when I was working for the government. You know, at nighttime. And don't think big seminars. I was going to people's living rooms with three people doing a stand-up presentation and just rehearsing and rehearsing and asking questions. And those people said, wow, this is so interesting. And, and they said, would you come back? I said, well, you get six people, I'll come back. It was like a Tupperware party. So I'd go back, there'd be six people. And then I would do a presentation. And then someone said, well, would you come to my place? And I said, well, if you can get 10 people. or I mean, that's how I just kept building it. But I started with two people in the living room. And I did that for a long time and, you know, just built my, just built, you know, and I know that you know this too. People say, write a book on a weekend. Oh, good luck with that. I mean, I know you've been working on your book. It takes a long time, right? Making it right. Especially writing, nonfiction. And yeah. then you have layout and you have to make sure it's all in there. I think my, fr I read Mark Victor Hansen's book, The One Minute Millionaire. And the 30, he says, write a book in 30 days and make a million dollars. My first book took 24 months and I'm still waiting for my million dollars. And that was in 2006, it came yeah. out. Well, I, I, I took, uh, you know, before I decided to write my book, I had a binder like this of notes and thank you cards and messages. And I just saved everything because people say, oh, I love when you talked about blank or I like that worksheet. And, and to me, they, you know, I knew they were thank yous, but I also knew that I had to pay attention because remember, I'm trying to teach four styles. I knew my style really well. So I was starting to learn what the other styles like. Some people like to check off list. I could care less, but some people love it. Some people like to have characters. All of my books have characters, Visual Vicky, Auditory Al. You know, some styles like that. Some styles like the worksheets and so on and so on. Yeah, I saw one of your pictures in here when I was flipping because I wanted to show some of the book because I think it's fun. What's nice is it isn't just your standard uh, book as in just reading it. You've got pictures, graphs, yeah. lists. Yeah. Again, points. it's satisfying all the styles, so it's not just a full textbook. I you forget know, your quotes. question. It's yeah. got quotes. It's, it's Hold it. on, quotes, yeah. That, the other thing that I liked about it when I first read it is I found it to be an easy read. And I hope that doesn't sound like an insult because it's it's a huge compliment 
I, I, wrote just, it I wrote it that way. Thank you. Because some of these, some books are so complicated and go down these paths. And that's why I loved, I love this. And then when you came and did a workshop in Toronto, I came, I sat in the first <laughs> row, like 20, I don't know. I think it was like 2005 or something. And I remember kind of chasing you, at, chasing after you going, I want to do what you do. And you're like, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> There's the don't. But you, because you, you were so tired. I think you were tired by the end of the day. Yes, and that's I, the worst time to get a speaker is at the end. I know. Get them on it's, the break. It's what, but I, but I am doing what you're doing because I'm doing it in a different way. What I wanted to do is help people. Yeah. And I teach people how to have fun and be lucky in sweepstakes. So it's it's the law of attraction kind of you know narrowed narrowed down, yeah. laser laser focused. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show because we need, especially after the past year, a lot of people are stressed out. They they need to have a a, a good forward focus. And that's how things are going to shift. Yeah. If we're well, all thinking positive and we're all putting out that vibe, it can't. No, that. Oh, see, I just caught myself. I can't. Okay. Argue. <laughs> the police it's are out. It's amazing how insidious. The don't no police are out in full force. It's insidious how it's in, it's amazing how insidious those negative words are in our vocabulary, and we use them so frequently we don't even know, know. notice that they're there until we're aware. And I'm fairly aware, and in front of you, I'm still oh, doing it. No, people aren't going to like me for about three days because they're going to say, "Holy s balls." Do I ever use the word don't, not, and know a lot? Well, guess what? Michael Loji didn't make you say it more. You're just hearing yourself say it more. But the good news, you know how to fix it. Now, I'm going to do a little mini training, and this is for you and your audience. And it's all about the vibes that you send about winning. Yes. Okay. Now, it's a hack. Do you want to okay. know a lot of Okay. Now, remember I said earlier... Law of attraction is always eavesdropping on your vibration. This is you and your vibrational bubble. Let's do a little example on buying a scratch ticket. I know that's you know it's more of a lottery, but the, the idea will be there. And I go to the counter and I win two dollars. Am I ever excited? Oh my god, I won two dollars! Woohoo! I love when this happens. But I don't stay in that vibration very long because what do I do with the two dollars? Oh, you buy another scratch ticket. Yeah, I buy another scratch ticket. And you know what? Four bucks. And now I'm like, oh, my God, I'm on a roll. I want, did you see that? I got two. And now I got, I won six bucks and I got two. So now I'm up four. And you know when we leave the counter? Say it. When we're, when we're done. So we put the four dollars and we buy and then we scratch them all. And it's like, okay, we play till we lose scratch tickets. So for a nanosecond, you held the vibration of your abundantness. Now, here's the key. If you're taking notes, write this down. Abundance is a feeling. Money's not a feeling. It creates one, a negative one. Oh. Abundance is a feeling. So what if, here's everyone's homework, what if you got the $2 scratch ticket, like someone's listening, <laughs> and you didn't cash it in? What if you put that $2 winning ticket in your lot wallet or on your bulletin board and every time you looked at it, you could declare, and this is not an affirmation, this is a, you could declare, it, huh, I won some money on this ticket. Like, oh, I've got three scratch tickets in my wallet. My wallet's bursting with winning tickets. It's a scam, that $2 ticket, because you play it until you lose it. Who's going to get a $2 and leave? I'd love to have a little um, TikTok camera at the scratch. How many people win a $2 ticket and say, I want to take the $2, please, and no one's doing that. They That's what the stay. lottery corporation's counting on. They will stay until they lose. And now what's the vibration? Oh, I was on a roll there, but you know what? I got up to 8 bucks and I just blew it all away. $8 down the drain. I could have bought something else. 
So the lingering vibration wasn't your abundantness in the moment. It was your observation that you lost again over and over and over again. So here's the tip. Hold on to that ticket. Hold on to that winning ticket. Or if you're cashing checks, just keep the check in the wallet or photocopy it. You have to keep proving, you have to keep proving your abundantness. Because when you are seeking and proving your abundantness, you're, you're observing it. So, okay, I'm abundant over here. You know, I got some free stuff yesterday and I got someone bought me coffee the other day and I've got two tickets in my wallet. Um, these aren't affirmations. They're declarative statements. And when you can point at some say, okay, here's proof here. Over here, someone, I, I bought one, got one free. I got 40% off over here. I've got three $2 tickets. I won a book from Carolyn and I did this and I got my 10th coffee for free today. What if you want to, what if you went on a rampage about all your abundantness? And while you're doing it, this is the hack. While you're observing and talking and looking and noticing of all the things that you could deem as being abundant, law of attraction doesn't know how they got in here. It doesn't care because it's not smart, it's obedient. So as you're sending the vibration of abundance through your observation of your abundantness, law of attraction will match it. Matter of fact, the only way to become more abundant is to send the vibration of abundance. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to put up this comment because they have a chance in the U.S. to do something that we don't have in Canada, and that's called a second chance drawing. You can take every losing lottery ticket and send it in to the lottery corp for the drawing or enter it online, depending on the, the state. And so Donna says she takes she she goes and finds the losers that people throw away and she sends them in and she's won prizes from other people's oh, losses. Donna, I would stack those in my wallet with the big red paper clip and say, look at all the potential I have in winning. You know, here's the, here's the hack. Law of attraction doesn't know where the vibration is coming from. It's just responding to it. So in her abundantness of find, it's probably the same with you with pin codes, finding pin codes. And there's a vibration that comes with that. Yeah, I have my, my, my basket of all winning opportunities that I'll be entering. <laughs> That's right. And, I and you know what? Them over time. But listen, the anticipation of winning is a vibration. It's like, oh, I'm anticipating winning. It's so fun. When you play what you play, it's the anticipation that sets the energy in motion. You anticipate winning, or you should be like you are. And your anticipation, you're not anticipating losing. And if you are, then you got to shift that vibration. If you if you don't if, if you don't think you're gonna win not you, but other people, they need to find, they need to find proof that they've won something before. So I'm not winning anything right now. I'm not winning anything right now. What if you said, boy, I remember 2008, I blew the roof off. I won this and I won that. And I got free dinners and the radio station and on and on and on and on. And all of a sudden you've changed your thoughts and changed your vibration. And law of attraction doesn't know you're remembering the summer of 2018. It's responding to how you feel about it. So whether you're remembering something that you won or pretending or observing, law of attraction doesn't know how it got in there. But just be more deliberate about what you're including. Now, there's two ways to know what you're including in your vibration. So, well, how do I, Michael, how do I know? I can tell you from here. If you're curious and you want to know what you're including in your vibration about winning, how's that working for you? It's a perfect match. In other words, the amount of tickets that the amount of prizes that you're winning is matching the vibration that you're sending about winning. Ooh. That's how you know what's in your vibrational bubble. People say, well, how do I know what I'm vibing about money? Open your wallet. It's a perfect match. Well, what's, what's my vibe I'm sending about new clients? Open your new client file folders. It's a perfect match. Now, the other way to know what you're including is your bubble right now is how you feel. If you're feeling crappy, guess what? It's in your bubble. If you're feeling abundant, it's in your bubble. Oh. So that brings me to one of the most important, well, everything's important that I'm telling you, but they just keep building on each other. I want everyone to write this down, and Carolyn, I want you to say it when you see it. I mind my own vibration. That's right. It's your only job is to mind this vibration. 
In other words, what are you including? What are you observing with your eyes or with your ears? What are you giving attention to? What kind of people in your life? What are you giving? You know, what are you reading? Law of Attraction doesn't know if you're reading it, watching it, talking it, going to it, noticing it, observing it, remembering it, pretending it, complaining about it. It's all included. And at every moment, you have the ability to reset what you're including by reset what you're thinking, giving attention to. And most importantly, I'm going to show it one more time, the habit of eliminating and reducing the words don't, not, and no. Oh, my gosh. This is so good. So what is the number one thing you believe people do to stop themselves from achieving what they uh what they want or their goals uh it's gonna i'm gonna have to explain this but it's a good one uh is that people try to be too realistic you know what realistic is well first there's oh. a word buried. there's a word buried within the word realistic you know what it is it's a four-letter word it's real people what well, what about reality well, you know what, bro? The reality is you don't have any clients. That's your reality. So people want to stay with what's realistic. I'm going to be the first person ever to say, become unrealistic. Set an unrealistic goal. If you have, listen, you have to th listen to the semantics of this sentence. If you have four active clients and you want 10, is 10 unreal? I don't mean impossible or can't do it. The truth is 10 is unreal right now. Four is real. Four is my reality. Four is realistic. 10 is unreal. So become more unrealistic because if you keep getting what you're sending, then that's the, re that's the reality. You don't want reality. You want something unrealistic. It doesn't mean you can't have it. It just means it's not real. That's why you want it. It's not real in your space, your vibration. <laughs> So can we then put that goal out there? Because you told a story once, and I thought, and I always remember the story because I loved it. You were traveling and wanted to stick on to your healthy diet. So you were looking for a, because you were on smoothies. I love smoothies. Oh, you yeah. started looking for a portable blender. blender. And yeah. then the next thing you knew, the universe showed you one on the TV, but you couldn't get it because it was only in the States. And then you heard, overheard a woman in the in the drugstore because London Drugs in 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 the West Coast has like everything. It's like Walmart. They have an electronic section in a drugstore. So then you heard a woman over overheard her talking, and you asked her a question. She goes, "Oh no, they're over there!" And you're like, "What?" Yeah, it's my whole life funds that way. And so I'm just saying, should you not then say to the universe, "Not tens unrealistic, but." Show me what I need to do next to get to the 10. You could say that. In, in my book, I talk about having a desire statement. Here's how I would word that. I'm in the process of attracting everything that I need to do, know, or have that's in alignment for me to attract my ideal job. So I'll say it again. I'm in the process of attracting everything I need to do, know, and have. I don't know what I need to do. I don't know what I need to, I don't even know what I need to know. Whatever I need to do, know, or have. But there's a key sentence in there. I'm in the process of attracting it, as opposed to saying, I have this now. Your little brain says, well, no, you don't. I have 10 clients now. No, you don't. But I can say I'm in the process of attracting 10 new ideal clients with whatever I need to do, know, or have. And that little voice says, you know what? You are. You are in the process. You just met two people today and you got you see how you see how just one word makes the sentence true. The truth is I am in the process of attracting everything that I need to do, know, or have. The truth, I can't say I have this now. I'm, I'm going to make my point one more time. Let's say you had 10 clients, nine of them. Paid up front and on time, gave you a tip. One didn't. And the affirmation would be, all my clients pay on time and give me a great tip. Until you think about who? Betty or Bob that doesn't. And now you're not thinking about the nine anymore. You're thinking, oh, you know what? Well, Betty never gives me a tip and Bob never pays on time. But can you say this? My ideal client pays on time and gives me a good tip. Well, you're saying, well, Betty doesn't. She's not your ideal client. My ideal client gives me a great tip. Yeah. 
And again, it's a declarative statement, not see affirmations make a state something that isn't true. And when we, because, you know, uh, I have a happy, slender body. That's me in the book. I have a, my little voice says, well, no, you don't. So that positive affirmation is not congruent with the negative vibration. My bank account overflows. People say that and they have no money. They don't, that, that, it's, they, they can't believe that because of the reality. So. We covered lots of field tonight. We did. So the winner of the five books will be able to. Uh, well, no, they, one person doesn't get all five books. We're going to no, get no, five. Oh, yeah. No, the winner <laughs> is of the five <laughs> books. You're going to love it so much. We're giving you five of them. <laughs> oh, that's not true either. No, I'll be putting the rules in after because I, it's too difficult to edit the um, description. Uh, before we go to live and then it's easier for me to do it after so I do it after you're gonna have a week to enter the rules will all be there everyone will have a chance to and if you missed us live that's the beauty of the internet you can watch it on demand you'll still have a chance to enter and in the meantime and I'll be putting in Michael's links because it'll be very easy for you you can go check out this book you know I, I, I'm gonna t tell everyone just to go and buy it and then if they win it, they can just give it to a friend. Yeah. Because it's link. so good. You will want to give it. I can't okay. tell you how many copies of this I bought and gave away. Listen, there is a link on Amazon right now. Somebody bought a couple boxes of my books, and they're selling them for $8.88, really. So look for, go to, go to uh, they're under the new tab. I don't have the link, but it's eight eighty eight. He sent me the, uh, he did a screenshot today. He said, I'm selling your books for eight eighty eight. Would you help sell them? I said, yeah, 888. You can't buy a book for 888. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Yeah. And imagine if you had Prime. You know, if you had Prime, you're getting it for free. The reason why I don't sell, because I live on Gilligan's Island. Everything's expensive to mail from here. So I don't even sell them on my website. The best place is Amazon and other local bookstores. But Amazon, there's a huge sale. Yeah, me too. I, I, The only books I mail out are the ones that I give away as prizes. Yeah. And the ones I need for, you know, like for work, for media, for thank yous, for that kind of stuff. But otherwise, yeah, I don't sell them either. It's too, it's, uh, I don't live on Gilligan's Island either, but the post is, exp is expensive. Yeah. I've had people say to me, where's my prize? I'm like, I don't know, can't, the post has it. Yeah, no, let Amazon handle all that. Well, yeah, it's much easier to let Amazon. Thank you so much for coming on. This has been such a pleasure. I wish we were neighbors and I could just give you a huge hug. One of these days I will be back out. I'm going to I'm going to travel again. We will be traveling again and I will get to come out there and um, we'll do a show live together. We'll go to the Empress Hotel and we'll do it in, <gasps> the, in their grand tea room or something. That would be so and we'll, do, and we'll do everything. We'll do TikToks and Instagram. But we're not buying tea because it's seventy dollars a pot. We're just going to sit there. I'm just kidding. It's nice seventy dollars for tea. But it's you know what? Well, I will be. Well, I'll be so wealthy. It won't. It'll we'll, feel like we'll a penny. So abundant. We'll have two pots, please. And then we're going to get out our little bubble, and then brag about our our tea. Okay, Caroline. Thank you friends. so much. I'll Thank put you. all the links in for everybody. You have, if you hadn't heard of Michael before tonight, then I'm so glad you learned about him because I've known him for 18 years and he's changed my life. And so I can't thank you enough. And I'm hoping that this introduction is going to change yours too, because it's just been great. Thank you so much, Michael. Thanks everybody. See you later. Bye.